Let's go. It is 2v2 on... What? I didn't see the map. Okay, well, hopefully they, they're they still there, because I, I wouldn't mind seeing a 2v2. Yes, I know. Total change in attitude. I mean, I don't mind it. Casting Battle Rite has really softened my attitude on 2v2 and 3v3. I always thought 2v2 and 3v3 were perfectly valid ways of playing this game, but I never really played with it. Oh, hey, I'm in. Oh, they're playing tic tac toe Oh, thanks, guys. It's actually really nice. Okay, well, yeah, whatever. You guys go. Okay, so King's at... Oh, Potato Power. I haven't seen that in a while. Alright, so... Let's see. Potato Power going for the Tank Factory. King's at going for the Spider Factory. Dying for the what do you got? Heavy Tanks and Cloakies. Ooh, on Titan of all maps, too. This is, a, this is not a map I think I've actually ever casted. It is a map I've played a bit in Evolution RTS. I've never played in 0K. It's a very large map for 0K. But at any rate, it's a reasonably large map, but one where being able to deal with hills, like with bots, is important. So spiders and cloakies make a lot of sense here. So at this point, we have a much more of an aggressive start coming out from the East team than the GBC. A lot of fleas coming in, which is typical for spiders. Try to find a few weak points, which there are some. This metal extractor is kind of weak, but again, there are welders. We could just end up seeing mass welder. I don't think we're going to see Mass Welder. I think Dying is going to be a little more sensible than that, but who knows? Or sorry, not Dying It's... Wait, what? Oh! Oh, Hokomoko, no. No! Okay, Hokomoko, I think we're going to have a bit of a problem here. So it's a 1v2, as Hokomoko has gone and vanished. Oh, no, they haven't vanished. Are they playing... Are they playing a unified control system? Like, one player, but two... Com like... Well, two players, but one set of units? Is that what they're doing? I'm not really sure. Oh, yeah, sorry. The So the Steam, people are complaining about the Steam version. Yeah, the settings, if you copy over your Lua UI folder from the base folder, that contains all the configs and everything, if you copy that over from wherever your spring folder was into the Steam 0K folder, that'll give you all your settings back. So you don't have to, you don't have to retweak them. You just need to get that folder in. But anyway, back to the game, though. So it looks like Dimefront's going to be on their own, but again, I don't know. Like, what potato power is not bad. But I guess they figured they just go for a 1v1 against Kingstead. Anyway, back to line. We do have a couple glaives coming in. This glaive should be able to get rid of the metal extractor before going down, and it will. Just barely. Close run thing, and at the same time, we have another Kodachi at the bottom doing the same with the glaive for support. So at the very least, the East team having a bit of a hard time keeping their economy up while the GBC does maintain that 5 metal per second lead. So, Hokomoko... Well, actually, no, Dying for, I just, just GBC. I mean, they've decided to be hive mind about it, so they're going to be hive mind about it. I, I think they are. Like, that's what it looks like. I'm actually kind of surprised they did that. Yeah, oh yeah, divided a joint squad. Oh, I... Right. You can just do that arbitrarily. Just go, hey, let's all control the same units. So yeah, GBC hive mind. So, with that, you've got a... I mean, a set of glaives coming on the north side. You have a decent defense in the south. Actually, ooh, fleas in the south. Nothing to stop them. The Conjurer does not have a sidearm. It cannot help. Welders can. Conjurers can't. And the Kodachi... Ooh, no. Kodachi is coming in from what potato power? Getting some revenge and actually getting some nice revenge, too. Getting rid of two or three metal extractors. Looks like it will be three, as well as making that Conjurer go down, which means Dynefront's going to have an even harder... Or GBC, rather is going to have an even harder time expanding over to the south side of the map. That's what I always say. Get rid of the workers, because it, it delays the expansions by 30 seconds to a minute, just for the amount of time it takes for a worker to get down there and do all the things the previous worker was doing. That's what you want to do. If you can get 30 seconds to a minute, like 30 seconds in most games, that's about a fifth of, or that's about 5% of the game. That's a decent chunk of the game. Possibly 10%. So, you can get a lot in 30 seconds. Speaking of which, that one welder... Able to escape through the cliffside. The glaive is forced to go around, which is always the thing with spiders. 
Because spiders do have that all-terrain feature to them, they can just evade any real capture. And now, with the Blizzard Kodachi, that will stop the Glaives from doing much damage. So, ultimately, not... Oh, no! No, no, ultimately, no, 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 no! The Welder's still getting hit out! That is another dead Welder for the East C team. Getting some revenge for the Killed Constructor. However, at the center of the map, that may not matter. A push coming in from the Eastern team to force the GBC back and probably try to get some control over the center. Because right now, Eastern team, they've got fairly strong control over their side of the map. It's not complete. There's some metal extractors that aren't taken. But compared to GBC, where they only have the top left corner, there's still a lot more going for the Eastern team in the long term compared to the GBC, especially if this push here manages to find its mileage, and it does appear to be finding all the mileage in the world. Great value from there. If that, if that Conjurer goes down, actually that Commander as well, that's a juicy target. I don't see them going for that, though. Eastern team just wants to put the pressure on. As long as they get rid of that one Glaive, and there's a Welder there, so it can. As long as they get rid of the Glaive, they can build up, and they have that build up. GBC, on the other hand, they are starting to build up, but again, that delay on the Conjurer with the fleet continuing to harass means unless Dime from Hokomoko decides to start building up some static defenses over here, that flea is going to have no problems. And even then, the Glaive coming in here doesn't matter. The GBC has still been delayed. That's my point. That's 30 seconds to a minute delay coming from the GBC. That means the Eastern team has now a 12 medal per second lead. That means they have this army coming in the front that is able to stop basically anything in retaliation, allowing for the harassment getting in quite deep and possibly even destroying the South expansion again after it's just been painstakingly reconstructed. So, Eastern team getting on a very, very strong roll. And not even going for the Southern expansion, breaking up some of the metal extractors that lead to it. But no, going for the meat, going right up the north as well. They should be able to have no... They've got a problem. These metal extractors are dead. The ones in the top are also dead. The Lotus will cause a small speed bump, but even then it's not going to be too big of a deal. At the same time, there is a bit of a push over... Well, slight damage to the commander, but mainly the pushover from the Glaives to try to get some revenge. But the Ogre will stop it dead in his tracks. And the Kodachis, no problem whatsoever. Even the Lotus, it does not have the range. Like it barely has the range to make the Blitz slightly tickled. It doesn't have the range to do much else. However, however the Glaives have been pushed back. The Ogre doing its job perfectly, meaning the Eastern team has no problem securing their base and securing their half the map and securing their economy. While at the same time, finally some Blitz is coming in to get rid of the Kodachis from the GBC. But those Kodachis did all their damage. They got rid of about... 10 metal per second, no, 12 metal per second, on their own, on top of killing a few units, but mostly 12 metal per second, was gone for the GBC for a good 30 minutes, or 30 seconds. 30 minutes would be the entire game, that'd be dead. It'd be several games. But yeah, for a good 30 seconds, they got rid of that. So, there's not much the GBC can really do, other than hang back and try to repair. They are going to go a little aggressive, because that's also another thing you can do. And the Glaives are going to go north, they will find quite a bit. They'll find two metal extractors before the Stardust will stop them. Once the Stardust stops them, they're dead, obviously. That's what stopping means. But hey, you know, two metal extractors is something. We'll put G the Eastern team down to about 48, and GBC can build up from there. But still not great, as we do have Venoms in the back line, just slowly but surely making life miserable. It's not going to kill the metal extractor. It'll try. Actually, you know what? No, I'm wrong. It'll just barely kill the metal extractor. One more shot. There it is. Metal extractor down. So even as the GBC manages to get their defenses set up, manages to force back some of the damage the Eastern team has done, the Eastern team still manages to find a sneaky way in and manages to deal some damage. Now again, at the same time, there's the... There's that Glaive shot. Didn't manage to even do much, but... At the very least, the GBC has managed to stabilize reasonably well in the center of the map. It's not as well as their opponents, mind you. Like, that's the thing. This this assault over to the south, it can easily tear apart everything here. These ogres should just fight move, or not just fight move, just move down here. The fleas have the right idea. They're on the way. They'll be able to help out as well. But this entire section is open. Wide open. Nothing's built up here for defenses at all. No radar even. But no, it looks like the ogres are going to go up top, try to figure out what they can get from this section here. I mean, it's a bit more valuable as a metal extractor, but it's not really that useful comparatively. Like, this is just 12 metal per second right here. Come on. And that's exactly what Kingstad's doing. Getting those fleas down there, possibly trying to see if there is an opening to take out metal extractors. But at the very least, they will manage it. At the same time, though, Blitz is going up north. There's the GBC going for their revenge. There's that Glaive trying to get that last metal extractor it can easily get. And the Blitzes should be able to get their revenge, and the fleas going in the back lines, not finding any defenses giving some confidence to what potato power to go into the ogres. However, these metal extractors, again, staying alive for free. 
Not sure why, but they are. Kingstad, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Get those metal extractors down. At the same time, though, the Blitzes are coming in. The Glaive will go down to the Stardust. The Blitzes should be able to get past the Stardust, and that'll be fine. But that Stardust going down, that's actually fairly big. That means this entire back line is open. Kingstad has nothing to stop the Blitzes. Nothing has been prepared. A few Fleas going back in complete futility to try to stop those Blitzes. And that's actually very open. The Blitzes could very easily get in the front line to the... Not in the front lines, the back lines. Get to the factory, even. Destroy Kingstad's entire economic base and production base. They go around the back. They are not, however, going to do that. They could have. They won't. It was very close, though. And even then, though, it's still, like, at the same time, the attacks coming from the Eastern team managed to destroy all the Southern economy, now managing, now finally getting pushed back a little bit. As the Thunderbird stops the Ogres from dealing any damage, the Glaive is able to tear them apart, and that puts an end to the entire shot the, G the East team had to stop the GBC from building up. And at this point, both teams are reasonably even. Although nicely done, Kingstad setting up a few, setting up a couple Stardusts at the front, both to help defend, and also so that these Blitzes have no easy way out of here. So they're basically dead. They can provide a bit of pressure, but at this point, Kingstad knows they're there, is prepared to deal with them, and they have no way out. They should be able to get rid of the Stardust still, but yeah, that's, that's two Blitzes lost. That's not nothing. With a Reclaim as well, I mean, that's what... Yeah, 300 metal reclaim. That's pretty even. Pays for the Stardust. Still, though, the Eastern team, more importantly, has the economic advantage. And if we continue to look at the graphs, because graphs are handy, actually, they're even. <laughs> they are even for production. They're dead even for metal use. Army value, however, the GBC has the advantage, mostly from the air. They have a lot of Thunderbirds being built up. Those have been quite useful in getting generally good engagements. You, you disarm a bunch of units, you get the Glaives in finishes them off. Stopping this entire expansion attempt from the Eastern team, but the Eastern team again does have the higher economy, so as long as they're able to keep the units reasonably alive, and their attrition right now is roughly even, so as long as they keep the units alive, they will be fine, but that Welder! No! That disarmed Welder! It only died! Because that Thunderbird was there. Thunderbirds counter everything. And they really do, actually. Disarm is great as a mechanic. For, well, for player use. I don't, I'm not making any comments design-wise. I do think it's a pretty cool mechanic overall, but for actual use of getting into a fight that's a hard fight, yeah, Disarm is a great way of breaking up defenses. At any rate, the GBC is still not able to stabilize. This small force here shouldn't be able to deal much damage, especially as the Thunderbirds are coming in. But it, they can still move. They can get on the cliffs. They can get kind of out of the way. But they have 20 seconds, and they are not... Or 10 seconds, rather, and they're not going to be able to make, it, make use of it. They are done! They are done. But still, the Eastern team retains that economic advantage. And that that keeps them kind of in the lead. Their army value only getting behind because of attrition. GBC is doing a great job with those Thunderbirds. But at the same time, it's just a matter of time. A matter of what anti-air comes in. And that should not take long. I should not even anti Are we going to go anti-air? No, just Cyclops. No Tarantulas. No Copperhead. No, no Ettons. No switch over to an air factory in order to build some anti-air. Nope. Just crab and cyclops. Go for the end... Well, not end game. Go for the, like, mid-game... Mid-game power units. Push in with that. Given the fact that, that minotaurs are coming in, that's not a bad idea. Get that cyclops in. That will counter them. And the, the fleas will help, too, en masse. But this is the big thing. GBC is trying to push in with these minotaurs. Trying to essentially just cut through and hit the back lines the spear shot in, but unfortunately not able to do that thanks to the, the fleas and venoms just tearing it apart, like st stunning them out completely, that EMP that EMP is the best crowd control so with that the Thunderbird at least coming in there to try to provide some support, but unfortunately it also disarmed its own units, so at the very least the Minotaurs can get out of there, or could could, the venoms are still alive one fewer thanks to the crab, yes, but still, the Venoms, most of them are still alive. But even with that, the GBC, again, their attrition has been so efficient. That's the biggest thing. They lost a Minotaur. That is huge. But their attrition has been very efficient. Their territory control is strong. They are now able to set up their economy as well as, GB as the Eastern team. I don't know why this is on the left side, to be honest. But anyway, they've got that set up. It's there. It's just a matter of what can they do with that, because at this point, the GBC 
they're getting some harassment in there, and there is a lot of naked expansion in the back line, so they could find a fair amount of control there. And as long as they maintain the center, they will be able to get an army advantage from that, because they already have an army advantage, actually. Their army value is only 2,000 up, but still, it's there. Metal use definitely in the favor of the Eastern team, but that's it. Otherwise, very much in favor of GBC. And now we're seeing it. The Crab should be going down fairly soon, getting EMP'd out as well. The Disarm doing everything it can just to hold things in until the EMP happens. And now with the EMP, that Crab's got nothing to save it. At the same time, a bit further south, we have a couple Ogres coming in, trying to get through, and they should be able to punch through, possibly get to the Defender, but again, Thunderbird providing too much, too much of a frightening presence. So instead, going up top, now that that Crab's down, it's pretty much up to what Potato Power to actually hold the line, and if they manage to do that, that'll be fine. If they don't manage to do that, then obviously they're going to be in a bit of a tough spot, because as it stands, the, the entire back line has got wrecked by the Glaives. The front line is being torn apart by Thunderbirds, and while the top is working out okay, it's not even going to last that long, as there is likely going to be a push there once this force is gone. Either going to be pushed to the top lane, or top side, or just pushed down the middle. And all the Blitzes coming in, that seems likely. I mean, just on the side here, just on the side of the GBC, there's about 20 Blitzes. And again, as always, 20 units of any one type is generally a fairly large ball. I know it doesn't sound very big, especially if you're coming in from Supreme Command, that sounds absolutely tiny. But no, in 0k, 20 units is quite a bit. Like that's, you have a strong economy, you're building up, you're really focusing on that one type of unit, and you have the money to pull it off. And that's exactly what's happening. At this point though, what potato power? They're managing to hold on reasonably well. They got rid of the Thunderbirds, that chainsaw did its job. But, again, it's hard. And actually, pointing out, people pointing out in chat that the potatoes need more radar. You know, they kind of do, actually. They don't really know what's going on outside of the front line. GBC, on the other hand, also could use more radar. They also don't really know what's going on apart from the front line. It might be because of one of them spiders. Spider, because the Weaver does have radar just built in, and that can make one a little bit complacent about their radar construction. However, what may not make them complacent is losing their commanders. Kingside Commander goes down, and only one, maybe, of the Blitzes goes down in the process? No, not even one. One of them does go down thanks to Fleas and Venoms, but yeah, that's that's a commander down. That's half storage. I mean, thankfully for them, the Eastern team had very little metal in storage. They didn't lose any in the process. Thankfully, all of them, they have the anti-air defenses to actually stop those Thunderbirds from doing their job in the back lines. But that's fine. The GBC doesn't care. They now have an economic advantage. They have an army value advantage. They have a massive attrition advantage of 6,000 metal. And the Fencers just pushing in here should be able to take care of most things going forward. I mean, the Cyclops is the main target there. The Ogres should be able to take out the Defensors without too much of an issue. Like, Defensors will get the damage in, but the Cyclops can just move in and fire off a bunch of shots, hit-and-run style. Again, hit-and-run units work really well in this situation. And, of course, the Goliaths can just fire. Or the Tremor! Because why not have a Tremor when you're dealing with skirmishers? Just fire off artillery! That basically counters them. And when you have a bunch of units like Ogres that'll stop Raiders from coming back to get the artillery, then your artillery is quite safe. Still, though, the GBC, with that 40 metal per second advantage, that's including Reclaim, yes, but 40 metal per second advantage. I mean, they're behind for actual metal use thus far, but that's a matter of time. That's not much time, either. The, the only thing is, there's not a whole lot of caretakers in the back line, so this is going to get stored fairly quick, and it looks like storage is... Where is the storage? Actually, I don't see much storage. Well, it almost doesn't matter, though, because at this point, the GBC will be able to turn that into metal fairly quickly, getting more caretakers built up, and they already have four factories. That's 40 metal from there, 30 more from the, from the caretakers, and they have units around the front line building things, so, yeah, they've actually got quite a bit. They have a lot being constructed, and they have the advanced geothermals being built as well, on top of making sure their entire overdrive grid is perfectly set up, but even then, a few more caretakers would not be amiss. Not that it may matter, though. The Blitz is coming in on top of the Thunderbirds. The sheer death ball of Fencers and Blitzes. I mean, how many units do we have? 24 Fencers, 21 Blitzes, and 13... Well, 13 Ronin is something, I suppose, but mostly the Blitzes. And the Fencers in the back lines. Still, though, the Force had to push through. With that, how much did they lose in the process? Still lost almost all their... Well, I should know. They kept most of the Blitzes. Kept about half their Blitzes. So that should be game. The GBC pushing with this giant death ball army. 
And with that, it's basically going to be a matter of getting in and winning. There's nothing. Well, there's nothing really to stop them. Like, look at the six thousand metal army value. Most of which is this crab. Or about a quarter of it is this crab. I'm not joking. That's sixteen hundred metal right there. And there's still a bit more to try to defend, but again, this is all being constructed, and all that is really needed right now is a few more caretakers in the back lines. Or just to have this conjurer help out a bit. Either way, you know, something. But it may not even matter. I mean, nothing is really built to defend. I have some shield blasts coming in for racketeers. So that's something. Oh, dirt packs, not racketeers. Just get in some cannon fodder to get in the way. Don't even try to disarm, just try to distract. Not a bad strategy. Could buy some time allowing for Kingstad's units to get in and, the, and actually help out in the fight, but I don't know if that's going to happen. There's a Strider hub up, but it wasn't even used for anything, unfortunately, other than assist building. They expect a Dante or a Scorpion at this point. Actually, a Scorpion would be a very good choice right now, if more for the fact that the Eastern team is in a tight spot, but even then, actually, they have 60 metal per second. They could build a Scorpion right now. It would only take about, like, 50 seconds. So they wouldn't be in a terrible spot. Still, though, that would mean they wouldn't have the Recluses coming in to help provide support and also help buy some time for their teammate. Though, I'm not sure how well that's going to actually matter because Wet Potato Power has basically lost their factories. Right, they lost their new Shieldbot factory, they're losing the Heavy Tank factory, or the Tank Foundry, rather, and they will also be losing most of their economy in the south side of the map. That's mainly it. So, yeah, the GPC able to take that and now have a 40 metal lead. Like I said, I could see a Scorpion barely maybe managing to push that. But that's, again, 50 seconds-ish. So I don't see it, sadly. I don't know why it says one minute. I mean, I kind of like that. It says what time it'll take. But five minutes isn't entirely accurate. It'd be like, if I were to select all of this... Yeah, 115. Yeah, that, that would work. Ha! I was correct! Roughly. I can math in my head! And that's fine. Because at this point, more so, the Eastern team kind of needs to do that. They have a lot of metal. They actually managed to get a lot of reclaim off that fight. Because they did manage to... They they pushed back. They're in a very bad spot right now. They're 13,000 metal behind for attrition. They're 13,000 metal behind for actual army value. Scorpion might not be a bad idea. They're going for a Dante instead. Also not a bad idea. Put everything on that, and they should be able to get it done... Actually, now-ish? Kind of surprised that's not... That's slower than I would expect. Huh. Oh, right, their metal's being split between the factory and the Dante, that's why. Not everything's going to the, the Dante. They had that, it would work fine, but still, send to the map. A lot of push happening there, too. Dive, well, GBC still maintaining their main, their large army. Phantom's in the back just to be safe. <laughs> Hitting some fleas instead, not managing to do much. But, hey, the more important thing is that Cyclops. Holding the front line. Well, also the air, the Swiss in the back, just to make sure nothing really gets sneaky. On the other hand, though, no no use of striders. Enough caretakers to make use of all the metal, but no use of striders on top of that. And most of the metal was from these, from the reclaim in the center. Like, this is, this center reclaim was, well, 3,000 now, was several thousand before. These welders could continue to reclaim, and that would work really well for them. But they aren't. Not sure why. At any rate, though, it may not even matter. The heavy tank factory has gone down, and what potato power has essentially nothing to add here. The Dante is slowly being built, but mostly the Recklesses are the focus. Which kind of makes sense at this point. That's really the only hope. And even then, they're all down. There's not much Kingstack can do here. I feel like the, the Dante is something of the last hope, but even then, the Fencers are their long-range units. They can stop that Dante from being able to do much. And it looks like... Uh, why is this over here? Well, it doesn't matter. Resigned vote has been made. GBZ takes the match. After a fairly shaky early game where the Eastern team got a lot of harassment on the south side of the map. Like, really, that south side harassment did a great job there. Also, why is this so far down? But yeah, that south side harassment did an awesome job. They managed to maintain a strong metal lead early on. They managed to get themselves a reasonably strong army lead early on as a result. And were able to do a strong harassment. But once it got to the point where the GBC stopped that and did some counter harassment of their own, especially once it got to the point where the GBC was setting up air units, getting their air force really well set up, and generally stopping the harassment in the back lines, which was reasonably consistent at first, then it was fine. And then, of course, the Eastern team didn't really fortify their back lines, so a few glaze could go back and 
start harassing, and then, of course, the Blitzes up front start harassing as well, not much stop them. Overall, the Eastern team got a very strong lead, but didn't turn that into fortification, and that left the GBC with an opportunity to get back in the game and ultimately win it. So well done to Dimefriend and Hokomoko. And also, yeah, that's a merge. That was a squad thing. They're, the two players controlling the same units, not having to coordinate giving units to each other. They just all had the same units under control. Which I expect will be a thing that happens in team games in general. And I think that's actually why that feature was added. I mean, to, okay, to be fair, the feature is an engine, engine feature that's existed forever. It's more the interface to allow you to do that easily. Because, yeah, being able to have two players or multiple players all controlling the same set of units is a thing the engine has always been able to do. It's actually kind of confusing because the engine refers to a group of players controlling the same set of units as a team. Whereas what most people think of as a team is internally referred to as an ally team, which is confusing. But at any rate, squads are the 0k name for that, where it's the team. The, the squad is the set of players that are able to control the same set of units. And that gave a pretty big advantage to the GBC. And I expect in tournaments going forward we will see that because it makes sense. I should kind of be curious to see what happened if we had a team versus not or a squad versus non-squad version. I don't see an advantage to non-squad outside of solo queue if you don't have voice comms. But solo queue. <laughs> matchmaking. Battle rate terminology. Of matchmaking. I don't really see that being more beneficial than just squatting up. If you have coordinated con coordinated communication, squatting is especially effective because now you just, you can easily coordinate all the forces. Yeah. Mumble or Discord or any any way you have for talking to people, that works. Anyway, though, that is going to be it for me tonight. So thank you for watching. It's the longest stream I have done for Zero K ever. Thankfully, the first two hours or something I can just cut out into a couple videos. It's only the last bit that's going to be a video per game as usual. So yeah, this was cool. So thanks for watching and have a good night, everyone.